Hi there and welcome to the video. So what we've got here on the left hand side is a Flux um, AI image, the Flux dev model image. And on the right hand side, we've got the same prompt or a very similar prompt in the same Flux model, just with some settings tweaking. So there's been no LoRa's, no different models or anything like that. And I'm going to show you in a few moments how easy it is um, once you know what kind of settings to tweak to achieve the same sort of results on your own images. So just before we dive into the um, Flux the Flux interface that I use, and I'll show you how to change the settings, we're just gonna go uh, briefly across the differences. So on the left-hand side, obviously, this is what I'd consider to be a kind of a pretty typical Flux-looking image. It's got, you know, it's got the sort of slightly soft skin. It's got a nice, nice overall look, a nice sort of color depth to it, but it's uh, missing some of that detail, that fine detail that we um, would associate with like sort of real skin. It's also got the certain facial structure that you get with a lot of flux images. Um, and it's very easy to actually bypass this and without piling on lots of lauras and things like that. So I'm just going to jump back over to this other side. And obviously the difference is night and day. There's a lot of texture. There's a lot of real looking details to the skin. The pose is a bit more natural. It's just less processed looking. It's not saturated, but it's still got a lot of color depth. Um, it's just night and day. And these are all very simple tweaks that you can do yourself. So I'm going to jump into Draw Things now, which is an app that I use. It's a Mac only app for um, sort of stable diffusion models, etc., and other kind of um, open source models. However, it's um, the, the controls and the settings that I change in this should be pretty universal across other software. So if you use like Comfy UI or other platforms, you'll definitely be able to find like the equivalent in those. Um, and even if you can't find all of the exact settings, if you use something like replicate.com and you might not have access to the um, exact settings that I change there, even just changing some of them will be enough. So that's our original. As you can see here, the prompt at the top, very simple prompt, portrait photo of a 40 year old woman with short pixie cut blonde hair wearing a floral scarf. And I'm just gonna go down here on the left hand side. I'm just gonna touch upon the settings that I use for the original because they're what I believe to be kind of t stereotypical recommended to beginners flux settings that you see as defaults on a lot of platforms and what people tend to, tend to um, recommend. So we've got image size. I'm just gonna highlight the ones that are relevant to this image. Image size, we've got a kind of what this software class is normal sort of resolution for this aspect ratio or size, which is 1152 by 768. So, you know, pretty standard there. Number of steps, 30, which is, again, sort of around about the typical recommended um, amount. The guidance or CFG value, 3. I've seen like between 3 and 3.5 marked as the default for most um, uses of flux. Um, and then... I'm going to leave that next one. And um, the sampler, now this is different on other softwares like Comfy UI. It's got like sampler and schedule and things like that. But in here, um, I've run this one based on this Eula A, so Eula Ancestral Trailing option, which again, there's something based around this um, Eula sort of ancestral is what I see a lot of people recommend for um, Flux, both Dev and Schnell. So I run it on that. The shift, everything else, everything else is left as default. Okay, so now we come over to the we come over to this result. Now to go back to the prompt, I have made a very a very slight adjustment to the prompt, and I've all I've added in at the end, so I've not even built it into the flow of the of the sentence. I've just added it on the end. Natural skin texture, pores, slight blemishes. Now there's nothing magical about that, and if I was to delete that, it will probably still look ninety nine percent as good. But it just helps to just add a little bit more of the little slight odd red patches on the face it doesn't magically make the skin texture pop out and look more realistic but it does help a little um, combined with the other settings so now if we go down the left hand side and we'll look at the settings for this i've locked the seed sorry it's flying around here i've locked the seed value so when i ran it it was based on the same seed as the original so the first change is i've upped the size so i've gone from normal too large so the the value is has gone from 768 by 1152 and now i'm running it at 1024 by 1536 now obviously this will put a little bit more strain on your on your system and your <clears throat> gpu or whatever but 
a larger canvas facilitates more detail. It's that simple. And it doesn't need um, high-res fix for this on mine. I can go to this resolution, um, and it seems to be absolutely fine without even using high-res fix, which is how you're going to get the most quality. So that's the first major thing. Second, I've not touched steps here, but ordinarily I would recommend actually increasing the steps from 30 or 35 up to potentially even like 50 or in extreme cases 60 to really bring out every little minutia of detail but i haven't bothered here because that would have really bogged it down and as you can see the results it it didn't need it guidance or cfg depending on how it's labeled and your interface this is what probably makes the biggest difference and a lot of beginners don't actually really understand or play with so it started off on the other one it started off as three which three or three and a half is typical. I drop that down to two. Um, it can go even slightly lower than that. And that's just going to push it more into the realm of a realistic image. And um, it's not going to be as saturated. It's, it's going to lose some of that flux typical chin and facial structure that you get. And it's just going to make it a little bit more pushed towards reality. Now, for realistic images like portraits and things, that's what you want. If you were doing something that was super creative, like sci-fi elements or creative illustration, you, you'd probably want to not do that because it would it would inhibit the sort of the creative nature of the of the actual generation. But when you're going for realism, feel free to go down even less than two. I've gone as low as sort of one and a half before. If you go below that, it starts to completely fall apart and the quality goes down the toilet. But around two is a really good starting point to nudge it towards that kind of that kind of look. And the last thing I really changed was the sampler on here. So I changed it from the Euler Ancestral trailing on here to this DPM plus plus 2M trailing, which just it just adds a lot more small details. It just seems to really add more realism to it. It is slower, so it will be at the cost of render time. But in my eyes, it's, um, it's absolutely worthwhile. And in fact, while we're just talking, I'm just going to change this, just this sampler back, and keep everything else the same. And I'm going to run this, just out of curiosity. And um, I'm going to see what we've got. Oh, there is one more thing I've changed, and I forgot to actually make sure I've changed it, the shift value. Now, this is this can be quite important as well. So the shift value by default, because I had the resolution dependent shift, so it basically automatically changes the shift value depending on the size. I sometimes like manually lowering it a bit um, because then it focuses more on the finer details in the image um, and less about the big the bit you know the larger kind of um grouping of pixels so when you've got an image like this where you really want all the skin texture and pores to pop out actually pushing the shift towards a lower value can help you out um but that's just by the by so anyway let's run that with the um like i said with the previous um the euler ancestral trailing sampler just to see what an effect that would have made okay welcome back so that's the image um, that's the image that's been generated with all identical settings but just changed the sampler from the DPM++2M plus plus back to the Euler A which is what we used on the original before image so if I switch between them you can see what huge difference the, the, um, the sampler makes so that still looks good but it's still got that more of that fluxy look so if I compare the before and the after all of a sudden it's not quite as dramatic but when I update the sampler to the DPM++ 2M trailing, all of a sudden we get all those little details come out. Everything looks super, super nice and super detailed. So there's some, there's some options I would recommend. And any combination of those changes in parameter and techniques will make a positive difference, even if you did nothing but lower the CFG or guidance rating from three, three and a half, or whatever, down to sort of two. That would make a good um, difference. And the other things kind of just work with each other to um, to really give a much superior result. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something from it, and I'll see you in the next one.